I've been fortunate during my time as president of RAM to introduce several extraordinary commencement speakers. Uh, Bob Zellick, president of the World Bank, then Senator Elizabeth Dole, uh, JSB, the incomparable John Seely Brown, the late Congressman John Lewis. But I couldn't be more excited about this year's uh, commencement speaker. Uh, you heard in the citation that was read by uh, Chairman Leiter about Wanda Austin's remarkable career. I think it was pretty well written, uh, but if you can believe it, I think it was a bit understated. I say that uh, because I had a first-hand opportunity to see her executive leadership at the top of one, uh, of one of the nation's preeminent scientific and engineering institutions, the Aerospace Corporation. I had a first-hand opportunity to see her intellectual leadership when we served for 10 years together on the United States Defense Science Board. And all of us saw her personal integrity when she stepped in to lead the University of Southern California at a crucial moment in the university's history. When I think about the kind of leadership that can restore trust in science and analytics, I think of Dr. Wanda Austin. Now, we're friends now, uh, but I have to say that it hasn't always been that way. In fact, we started out as competitors. And to be perfectly honest, we started out as fierce competitors. Uh, and I don't mean competitors within the Air Force. Uh, I don't mean in the recruiting market. There was some of that. I'm referring to a competition that was a lot more serious than either of those things. For many years, it came down to me or Wanda for that last upgrade on the United flights to Washington and back. <laughs> she will remember. Fortunately, we overcame that rocky beginning, and I've uh, developed enormous respect, uh, admiration, and affection for your commencement speaker, Dr. Wanda Austin. Good morning, good morning. And the story that Michael tells is true. You know, and uh, oftentimes he won, and you know, I had to drag my bag to the back, and he would, you know, offer to send some nuts back or something. But uh, <laughs> Dean Stout, President Rich, Chairman Leiter, Chairman Lovelace, President elect Metheny. Trustees, Board of Governors, faculty, distinguished guests, family members, and degree candidates. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be here with you today to celebrate this milestone achievement and this momentous leadership transition as my friend Michael Rich begins a new chapter. I have to say, nobody warned me that you also produced Poet Laureates. Luke and Claire, that was absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. Before I give my prepared remarks, I would like to say a sincere thank you to Michael. He started as a summer intern and rose through the ranks to lead the RAND Corporation and take it to new heights. My career paralleled Michael's as I became the CEO of the other FFRDC down the street called the Aerospace Corporation after I started there as an entry level engineer. Michael and I faced many challenges together and we scratched our heads and never admitted defeat. We simply agreed that we had to be more innovative and try again another day. I learned many valuable lessons from Michael, and I learned a lot about him from reading the book of his father's life, Ben Rich, the father of the Skunk Works. So it is in Michael's DNA to do hard things and make it look easy. But the nugget that I received from Michael, which struck a chord and I carry with me everywhere, is the message about the risks inherent in truth decay. Michael, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. You, like your father, are an American hero.
graduates. You have made a permanent mark on the party-ran graduate school and on society that cannot ever be erased. Your commitment to be a future leader for discovering and developing solutions to the world's most pressing public policy challenges in the classical tradition of excellence and purity of purpose will have an impact that will last forever. A graduation is an end and a beginning, a closing of one chapter and the opening of the next. You worked hard to get here, and the transformation that has occurred within you has set you on the path to a phenomenal future. The faculty takes pride in what you have accomplished. Your family and friends are thrilled to see what you have already achieved. But I know, and you know, that you have only just begun. This graduation serves as a launch pad for what you will do next. You are limited only by your own vision and aspiration for your personal and professional missions. As leaders, there is no doubt that you are already leaders. You will hold the world accountable for what we are and what we do, because you will have a focus not only on what is needed today, but what we will need well into the future. As you embark on this next chapter in your life, I am confident that you are fully prepared to make your mark on society. Our world is being recreated and reimagined like never before and at an astonishing pace. Now you have the opportunity to set the direction and ultimate goals for serving and changing our society. Without a doubt, you are going out into a world that needs you. Our world is changing and we are searching for that sense of awe, wonder, and achievement. Research, innovation, and determination can help us to achieve our goals. Inclusivity and collaboration can take us there. But we must use our powers of thought leadership to enhance our world, to overcome the challenges we now face, and to utilize your skills and expertise for global good. Our sense of confidence and stability are being challenged every day. Even though we are keenly aware of the significance of science and engineering for our health and prosperity, respect for and acceptance of fact-based science and engineering is not guaranteed. Unfortunately, you have witnessed and experienced the effects of atrocious acts in unlikely places against the youngest among us at schools, against all of us at places of worship, government buildings, movie theaters, grocery stores, airports, concerts, and all manner of public events. Not to mention that you are still living through a global pandemic and bearing witness to a war. I wish I could declare to you that these issues and incidents are all in the past. But in fact, we all know that this is our present and unfortunately, for some time, these challenges will be part of our future. But you cannot be defined, and your future must not be constrained by these circumstances. You've witnessed unification and healing of communities that could easily have been ripped apart by grief and loss. You've also borne witness to how people find strength, compassion, and resolve, and solutions in difficult times. Your research has addressed some of the hardest societal challenges that we face today. Your commitment to public service is a beacon of light and hope for the world. Your work to improve policy and decision making through research and analysis in cyber, climate change, education, energy, health, homeland security, public safety, homelessness, caring for our military vets, and stabilizing great power rivalries will make us all safer, more secure, healthier, and enriched. My personal favorite 
is your work to ensure access to high value and sustainable health care to improve the quality of life for older adults. <laughs> you have the tools, the insights, and the passion to untangle this complex weave of challenges to define and implement policies that will put our society on a different trajectory. Because of what you have already accomplished, now you have the opportunity and yes, the obligation to set the direction and ultimate goals for saving and changing our society. You will embrace technology and all that it offers, but you will balance that against the environmental and social cost required for successful execution. You are the leaders we need to define the future, to develop solutions for public policy challenges facing our society and determine the future of our planet. When I was introduced today, you heard my professional bio. Let me share a little about the rest of the story. I grew up in the 1960s during the height of the civil rights movement. I was born in New York City. My father was a barber. He never finished high school. No one suggested that I, the great-great-granddaughter of a slave, could become a CEO of a major corporation or the president of a highly ranked private university. But a few people, admittedly not everyone, but a few people encouraged me to be all that I wanted to be. I challenge you to remember the people who encouraged you. They are your jewels. Treasure them and keep them close to you. Thanks to forward-leaning public policy, I was bused out of my neighborhood to go to a good school. Thanks to public policy, I was able to compete for and be selected to attend the Bronx High School of Science. So I received a quality education through the public school system and that redefined what would be possible for me in my life. My career was not a straight line, hard work was required and there were some bumps along the way. For example, when I had to call and tell my dad I was quitting my job. However, the bumps were usually followed by exhilaration, excitement, and achievement. Students often ask, when did you decide to become a CEO? I didn't. I just tried to do my best on the current job that I had and put one foot in front of the other each day. After working for a few years, my husband and two small children cheered me on when I decided to go back to get a PhD. I'm sharing this with you today because I know that each of you will chart your own journey. My charge to you today is be fearless, be courageous, be bold. You have the tools you need to be successful. Don't let anyone, anyone tell you that you don't. By choosing the party ran school, you have distinguished yourself and identified yourself as a leader. But being a leader is not easy, it's definitely not for wimps, but it is extremely rewarding. Before I close, I'm gonna share with you some quotes that still inspire me today and some lessons that I have learned along the way. Madeleine Albright said, while democracy in the long run is the most stable form of government, in the short run, it is also the most fragile. So the lesson is, be part of the solution, share your ideas, advocate for what you think is right, speak up, and certainly skip the great resignation. Don't be afraid of change. You didn't know there would be a pandemic, but look what you've accomplished. There will always be changes. You must embrace them and look to what's next. Martin Luther King said, the time is always right to do what is right. The lesson is be ethical, get the facts, ask questions and avoid truth decay. Truth doesn't come in shades. It either is the truth or it isn't. Maya Angelou said, 
People may not remember exactly what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And the lesson? Take care of your team. You will accomplish very little by yourself. So use the gifts that you were given to be a gift to someone else. Great leaders say thank you. Sometimes people struggle with taking credit for what they've done. As leaders, you know that you're accountable. So you are expected to take responsibility for the success or the failure. Saying thank you to those around you does not diminish your accomplishments, but acknowledges that you also see the contributions and the accomplishments of others. Bon Jovi said, when you can't do what you do, do what you can. And the lesson is, not making a decision is a decision. Paralysis is not risk-free, so don't get paralyzed. The circumstances will never be perfect, so assess the risk and make the best decision you can. You will move forward, and then you can reevaluate and make another decision to move you closer to your goal. And finally, Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And the lesson, choose the, to grab the steering wheel and drive the changes necessary to achieve your goals and improve the quality of life within the complex and changing world that will surround you every day. Perhaps the biggest contribution you can make is to help the world become a more thoughtful, more measured, sensitive, and less polarized place where decisions are research and fact-based. Make certain that your voice is being heard because your ideas are extremely important and well-formulated. You will assimilate new information and understand that there may be a different and valid view. You can promote greater understanding by asking good questions and then listening carefully to the answers. You are the leaders, the critical thinkers who will define the world in the future. Don't look around for someone else to do it because we are all looking to you to determine what needs to happen next on a global scale. Whatever we are today as a nation, as a society, as a humanity, you have the power to make it better. Graduates of the Party Rand School of Public Policy, we are all anxiously watching to see what you are going to do next. Thank you, good luck, and congratulations.